Okay, welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage live in San Francisco, California. The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events to track the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and our next guest, Patrick Rogers, Vice President of Product Marketing and Alliances at NetApp. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Um, we had just an amazing time with NetApp at the VMworld. Uh, you guys had a great presence there, really dominated the show. Uh, and you had the marquee uh, event at AT&T Park where we had theCUBE on the center field grass. Um, you guys celebrating with your top customers, great event. Really, we got, we got to see a little bit of the new NetApp, and I call it the software-defined NetApp. You're seeing a real focus on NetApp, and Dave and I were commenting after that, um, you know, this software, everyone's talking about software is the, is the focus. Absolutely. And that's, that's what NetApp yeah. was based on. Yeah. So, yeah. you guys are in a good pole position, stock's up, uh, companies kind of uh, running in that direction. Tell us, what's the update uh, here with NetApp at Oracle, and let's just jump right in. Sure. So, you know, it's funny, but uh, we have a little saying around NetApp that our products are nothing more than software wrapped in sheet metal. And it's absolutely true to your, to your point. It's all about the software. And, um, you know, one of the key topics and hot themes here, obviously, is cloud. And uh, NetApp has a pretty fundamental assumption about the impact of the cloud on uh, enterprise IT, and that is, that IT managers are no longer going to be just builders and operators of IT infrastructure, but they're going to be brokers of IT services. And they are going to act like service providers themselves. And so you will see uh, IT leaders making choices between deploying uh, infrastructure at their own sites, uh, as well as using cloud service providers and hyperscalers like Azure or Amazon or Google and they will actually be brokering across these various services and choosing them based on cost, SLAs, security, you know, those types of factors. And the key implication for this is, if you believe in this model, that the IT manager is going to be a broker of services, um, that in order to make that work for you, you are going to have to have a data fabric that extends across both public and private cloud. That's a very, very key uh, assumption. And if you don't have that universal data fabric, it's going to be very hard to easily broker and select and choose across those various services. Yeah, I mean, and that's what our software is so, all about. So, uh, you know, we just had an analyst on Elizabeth earlier from um, uh, Technology Research talking about how you know OpenStack could save itself from itself with Red Hat, and we're talking about Red Hat in particular. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dave and I bump into a lot of CIOs where they have Red Hat, they have NetApp, and are very interested in OpenStack. So you're seeing, you guys are involved in a lot of these, these operating kind of environments where sure. you're in the middle of all the action relative yeah. to say OpenStack yeah. uh, and Red Hat. There's a lot of enterprise yeah. requirements are in there, compliance issues, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. Um, what are you guys doing on that side? Because that's kind of a multi-vendor uh, ecosystem play but OpenStack really is getting a lot of traction on that. What, yeah, what's, yeah. what's your take on that? So the underlying trend there is open source technology, right? And so we see it in OpenStack, we see it in Hadoop. Um, you know, we, we see uh, Oracle uh, using that with MySQL, right? So um, there is no doubt that open source is going to continue to be a very, very important trend in the industry. Um, yet customers are going to be looking to run that on enterprise capable infrastructure, and they're also going to be looking for enterprise level support. And you manage the alliances, so you know, Dave and I were, were talking last night, we were with the Gartner uh, analyst, and you know, we were going back and forth on the Magic Quadrant talking about you know, how you know, it's a static post in reality, it should be multiple dimensions. Storage is moving from a pure play storage environment where you're now an element of a really big cloud offering. At the end of the day, it's a cloud operating system inside the data center, and with the public cloud, with open, the OpenStack, and then with Oracle, you have a lot of forces and different vendors, yep. a, lot of, a lot of ecosystem issues. So, yep. so with that, what is the take on, on NetApp's storage role as you guys roll more into that, that epicenter of cloud. Sure. It's an so, alliance issue, but it's also a partnership, but also functionality. Sure, so I was talking about this idea of a universal data fabric. In order to do that, you not only, be, not only have to be able to run your software within enterprise IT, but you need to be able to run it in the cloud, and even with the hyperscalers. So NetApp has one very powerful advantage, is that our software can actually run inside of a VM in a hyperscaler crowd. So we announced ONTAP B, uh, which is our uh, virtual storage appliance using our software. You can deploy that today with Amazon Web Services. So 
Uh, we're actually demoing that in our booth here at the show. Yeah. Uh, the idea that uh, you can have uh, Amazon Web Services with NetApp <laughs> private storage or run uh, on Tap V. You know, Dave and I always joke about the storage. When back in 2010 we started the Cube, we, you know, we said to Joe Tucci, is storage sexy? And we saw storage kind of be at the center of the conversation of the, of the convergence. And it's funny, Microsoft's yesterday announcing storage, cloud vendor announcing storage, and the storage vendor is becoming more of the cloud. You know, we think more of the storage is going to be the, the fabric of the cloud, more than the, the cloud guys themselves. Tom Georgian had the best quote on that, by the way, because we asked Tom at VMworld, Right after that, Tom said, I don't care if it's sexy, I just care if it's profitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was last year. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but here you have storage is driving a lot of the innovation in the cloud, not the other way around. So it's yeah. interesting. How do you guys, you know, it's an alliance issue, but I mean, what's your take on that? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, so it clearly is driving innovation. Um, you know, one of the big innovations for us has been cluster data on tap. And it's the idea that you can take multiple discrete storage systems and combine those into a complete uh, virtualized storage pool. That's a very powerful concept. There is no other storage vendor out in the market today that has that sort of capability that we do a cluster data on tap. That is essential for being able to virtualize uh, your IT resources and be able to carve those up and assign different policy groups to those, to those uh, storage resources. So we think you know, that in and of itself is groundbreaking and distinguishes our cloud strategy from what other vendors are doing. Uh, so, Patrick, I want to talk about the Oracle relationship. For years, NetApp you know, would talk about its, its relationship not only as a partner, but also as a supplier to, to Oracle. Oracle bought a lot of NetApp you know, systems. Uh, when Oracle bought Sun, not surprisingly, that, that changed. So your relationship now is one of you know, pure partnership, helping Oracle make its databases run better so you can ultimately you know, sell more and add more customer value. So talk specifically about how that relationship has changed and, and, and sure. what you guys are doing these days sure. with Oracle. So uh, we still continue to collaborate very closely with Oracle in three technology areas. One is core database, and one of the things that Oracle did early on was take uh, native NFS and compile that right into the database stack. Um, so with 11G and with 12C, um, we have a built-in advantage now for operating an NFS environment, and everybody knows that files are much easier to manage than LUNs, <laughs> um, but that's a key integration uh, that Oracle's continuing to drive and, and push as they go forward. Uh, so that's one area in the database. Um, another is with uh, Oracle Linux and OVM, uh, their virtualization manager. Uh, we are now offering OEL and OVM solutions with our FlexPod converged infrastructure with Cisco, and that's been a very attractive offering. Uh, and then thirdly, and very importantly, um, Oracle Enterprise Manager, which people are using to manage their distributed Oracle environments, um, now has native integration with all the great ONTAP functionality like snapshots and flex clones. And so from your Oracle console, you can now manage uh, your entire NetApp environment. So heterogeneity is, is your friend. You're, you don't sell servers, you, you don't sell you know, hypervisors, you don't sell right. database and applications. So. You guys do one thing, <laughs> one thing really well, it's storage. Uh, so obviously you live in a heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous world, heterogeneous world, sorry. Um, juxtapose that to what Oracle's doing, right? Red Stack, yep. everything's included in there, and specifically, I want you to tie it in to, to FlexPod. Sure, um, sure. FlexPod, I mean, it is, the name's great, yeah. right? it says it all, so it's, uh, Talk about your strategy there and, and how it's different than say yeah. the Red Stack. Yeah, so one of the important decisions that we made with FlexPod is we said early on, this was going to be a multi-hypervisor, multi-app uh, infrastructure. And so you can actually combine uh, different hypervisors, run them on a FlexPod, uh, or even run bare metal instances. That's a very, very important factor, and that's what we hear consistently from our customers, why they choose to deploy a FlexPod, because they want that ability to run multi-hypervisor environments. Even if they're using one major hypervisor today, they don't want to be locked into that particular decision for the future. And the same is absolutely true at the app layer as well. So FlexPod enjoys a really broad support uh, across all the major industry apps, and, and we have uh, uh, reference architectures and, and validated designs for all those apps running on FlexPod. That's a very powerful advantage. So your point's absolutely right. You know, heterogene heterogeneity is the name of the game. Talk a little bit more about uh, application integration. When we first met, you know, way back when, you were actually, I think, in charge of the application integration yes. strategy and, yes. and execution. So talk more about that. It's a, I know it's an area that's always been important to you, yeah. but also to NetApp. It's yeah. been something that's, yeah. that's yeah. helped you guys a lot. Yeah. I've met yeah. with the Microsoft team, I've been up yeah. to Seattle yeah. and seen, yeah. get the, all the posters of you know, number one Microsoft yeah. partner, and things like that, very proud of that. Yeah. So talk about where you're at with that, yeah. with that strategy? So NetApp brings a very simple advantage to an application administrator. 
Um, and that's the ability to be able to easily snapshot and recover their application at any point in time. And then we further extended that snapshot capability to be able to clone and provision new application instances. So in, a, in essence, we went right to the application owner and said, we're going to make your job easier. And we started, in fact, uh, doing that with Oracle and Microsoft. have extended it well beyond those partners to SAP and, and VMware and others. Um, but the fundamental value proposition is we make it easier for the app admin or the VM admin to do their job, you know, both from a data protection perspective as well as a provisioning and monitoring perspective. Okay, um, so I also want to talk about uh, one of the other big bets that NetApp is making. You guys have made a lot of big bets over the years. You know, <laughs> you, let's just listen to Dave Hitt's talk and he'll you know, uh, uh, list through them, not the least of which was betting the company on virtualization. Um, but also getting into the enterprise, you know, beyond just really sort yeah, of a getting into database system that works in database, us. right? Absolutely. So now the big bet is clustered on tap. Um, why is it such a big bet? Give us the update, and what gives you confidence sure. that that bet's going to pay off? Sure. So, um, you know, just to set the background is. Uh, we had to start with an entirely new design for cluster data on tap. We wanted to preserve all the great functionality that our customers enjoy and value from NetApp, but we wanted to provide it an infrastructure that allowed uh, for scalable growth and non-disruptive operation. That's what cluster data on tap provides. Uh, so now you can take multiple systems, combine them together, one single namespace, you can create storage virtual machines uh, across that, that shared pool, and those can be assigned to specific application owners, or groups of application owners. Uh, that's a very, very powerful concept. So that's a big bet for us. That's virtualizing your storage infrastructure to the same level that people have virtualized their computer. And, and that brings, let's talk about the business value that that brings. One is obviously scale. Right? Yep. People you know, always push you, you guys. All right, yeah. I'm trying to scale yeah. and it's yeah. hard. Yeah. And so, okay, yeah. so you, you deal with that. But yeah. what other business value efficiency. metrics are you seeing? So efficiency is really, really big advantage, right? The main reason why people virtualize, they want to make more efficient use of their IT assets, right? And that really was the initial driver behind uh, compute virtualization. We're doing the exact same thing at the storage layer. So you're using your storage layer far more efficiently than you would if it was discrete silos. And then thirdly, right, is obviously um, non-disruptive operations so that you can add capacity, you can upgrade capacity without ever having to take the complex down. Very important. Okay, so my, my last question is, is so um, you're seeing uh, Oracle in particular sort of licking its chops, you know, NetApp, big install base, yeah. um, uh, you know, trying to position the ZFS appliance as this you know, NFS device, talking about how it's, how it's growing. So, so going forward, you know, what's your message to the Oracle DBAs? Because you guys sell to the infrastructure heads, sure. you know, most typically. Oracle sure. selling to the application heads and the DBAs. Sure. Big advantage for them, you know, they're behind in storage, but they're, you know, they've, they've got to pick their spots. They're obviously picking you know, NFS as one. So what's sure. your message to the DBA crowd in terms of maintaining your, your value to them? Yeah, so, um, you know, that's, that's a great question because if you look at products like ZFS, Oracle uses it in two ways. One, they use it as part of their dedicated infrastructure and it's a very defined purpose. Uh, they're also trying to position that as a general purpose storage appliance or storage device. They're being far more successful in the former than the latter, right? And, and so if you are really interested in having a, app, a storage infrastructure that supports a broad variety of applications, offers choice, operates in private cloud and public cloud, you're going to want to go with a solution like Cluster Data on Tap. Great. All right, Patrick, really appreciate you coming on. You John, another great, uh, great segment. NetApp is really doing great, and you guys are really positioned for the cloud. One of the things that Dave, I wanted to uh, just highlight was is that you know, the OpenStack conversation is really interesting. We've had, I've had multiple conversations with Patrick. I want to get your follow-up opinion on this, is that you know, OpenStack has got the attention of CIOs, and it's, it's, it's a warm blanket for what they want. They want a little bit of Amazon-like cloud, but right. they don't want to go with Amazon with the lock-in that they have. That's, a, again, right. people can debate that all day long. But on-premise is where the preferred method is, but also they want public cloud. But OpenStack still has a lot more work to do. So you're seeing the Red Hat step up. You're seeing some of the experienced vendors. Uh, what, what, is, what is your relationship there with OpenStack and what's the update there and how do you see you guys bringing your expertise to the table with you OpenStack? Bet. Yep, so with OpenStack, as you know, there's a, a variety of groups. The storage group is called Cinder. Um, we work very closely um, with, with the folks at, at Cinder, the working group, to integrate our capabilities, snapshots, cloning, uh, NetApp Enterprise Storage with the OpenStack environment. 
And then we're really counting on partners like Red Hat to be able to provide the enterprise class support for that entire software stack running on NetApp storage. Uh, so we actually work quite closely, quite involved with the OpenStack community. We have a, as to your point, a large number of enterprise customers. It really was appealing and started for a service provider community, but now the enterprise customers are really attracted by right. the idea of an open source development environment and being able to get this very inexpensively compared to what they were paying for their, their prior software. Well, congratulations to Software Defined NetApp. You guys are in a good position. Stock's up, you guys are pumping. Congratulations. We're here live at Oracle Open World. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.